Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Game Review number 44. Today we have IK13Q versus Cassia 9 q It is a 4 stone game so it should prove to be quite interesting and we will see how it goes. So here we go and we see black or white playing a very fast paced opening and black pincering quite normal and white plays this way which is a little strange. Um, and then black plays this way. This is not a good move. This is not a good move because uh, black can just simply block here and get the double Hane on white and after white fixes black plays like this and you can see these two stones are actually under a lot of pressure because black's very thick here and you don't want to make your opponent thick especially when you have a pincer stone so normally uh, you would play something a little bit simpler like here or here because you don't want to give black that double Hane ahead of two um, so this combination I don't think is very good I think maybe you could try something like this first and then uh, if you want to try this way you can play something like this and that would be perfectly reasonable that way black is the weak one not not exactly white. Uh, now you also have a base so it should be perfectly fine if you jump out here. However, if we play this way, uh, black will get thickness here, but instead of black chooses to play this way, this is a little bit strange. A little bit strange. I don't see the reason to try and cut off these two stones here. This shape's quite solid, so uh, no reason to do it. Um, white can actually just simply play here and uh, connect, and white is perfectly fine. And now you can see uh, black didn't really gain much with some influence here. You could have gotten a severe attack against a stone, but all you gained was a little influence. And now if you go there, white has some options here or something. If you try to do that and come out, then maybe White has a, a jump here to break through. So it's a, a it's not as quite as solid as I would like it to be. Um, so I think a Black's Black made a mistake here. It's no reason to play this way. However, White uh, White plays here. Uh, this doesn't make much sense considering this is quite damaging if Black plays a follow up. Uh, and also locally it doesn't make sense because uh, this split actually puts a lot of pressure on this stone So I think white's trying too hard to play too fast But actually he's leaving himself loose and weak everywhere so black could actually ignore this and just kill these two stones like this and uh, Black's way ahead now uh, This stone is not uh, a, this s3 is not equal to these two black, uh, white stones So white made a big blunder here Black, however, tries to play here and tries to keep it solid. No, just cut block, cut white off, cut white off. There's no reason not to cut white off. Uh, if he tries to play something like this, like crazy like this, uh, maybe this is what he's aiming for. Uh, however, if you don't like that, then uh, you don't even have to respond. Just play something like this. Um, you could also just play this and keep it simple, normal, revert it back to normal. Uh, but I think uh, getting Sente here is much more important. Much, much more important. So let's see, locally, there's this variation. Uh, you're going to target from this way and cut it off like this. That's one. If you sometimes feel this is necessary, then that's a second way to do it. But this one doesn't look so good for black. So maybe not that one. <clears throat> uh, in some cases, you'll go here, but then the white will get the outside. Uh, looks like you have the ladder, so this should be fine for you. You should almost always have the ladder in the handicap game. Yeah, you should almost always have the ladder in the handicap game. So this one should be fine for you to play. Um, so white might choose to go here, but yeah, that's not going to be good for him. Now he's getting cut off everywhere. Uh, you can still kill these. So that's that's one move. You could also think to just uh, push it down like this. Um, you could go here and play something like this, or maybe like this. Uh, but this might not be so good because uh, there's a lot of Aji in there. So I don't really like this one. So maybe just go here if you don't like any of the other ones. Normally you should try and split here though. This is a uh, I think this is a trick move. Yeah, this is a trick move. However, this is the biggest move. Just ignore it. Like, I don't even like this area. I could ignore this area and still not even care. This is much bigger. If you don't like the local variations, just ignore it. White doesn't really have a strong follow-up. White can go here, but uh, you just start jumping out and you're fine. It's not like you're going to die, right? You're not going to die. So I think you're fine. Just ignore it. Uh, this is a little bit strange. Uh, you want to go ahead and get a base. I can get a base. Uh, still this area up here, so it looks like white is succeeding in confusing black. Uh, white has this move, so I don't like this K4. 
Uh, however, white chooses to come in immediately here. Not a good move because black gets a tiger's bond though. Which he does. White normally just nobies here, and this is a uh, quite powerful to attack this black group. Even black does this, black doesn't have many eyes, and now white can start going this way. So I think white, you need to learn to keep your game simpler. Just because it's handicapped doesn't mean you go crazy. Because if you play, um, if you start ranking up, and you get to like, let's say 4Q, and their 4 ranks were getting, let's say their 8Q, they're not going to be playing, uh, they're not going to let you off the hook with these moves. They're going to start cutting you and splitting you and attacking you severely. This is not how you play against Handicap. You don't create as many weaknesses as possible, no. You play solid, a quick, solid game, gain territory as fast as possible, and make local exchanges good for you, and just slowly catch up point by point by point. You don't try and get groups everywhere that can be attacked, because then your opponent is going to take control of the game, no. What you do is you try to play uh, sometimes Sentai variations or local variations that are locally good for you, um, and make good exchanges for you, and create uh, and try to play a quick pace game. But the quick pace game and tanuking everywhere and leaving weaknesses behind is completely different. A fast pace game means to make uh, fast combinations, and then when your opponent uh, and just kind of wait for your opponent to make a mistake because when they make a mistake, because they should, if it's a forced down game, uh, you'll be able to punish it as severely as possible, and you'll catch up like five points here, two points there, seven points here. Uh, this and it'll add up. And remember, this is supposed to be an even game, so it's supposed to be last until end game to where Black's in the lead, and then you'll catch up the last few points in the end game, um, theoretically. So it's not about trying to immediately take back the lead. It's about trying to take it back point by point by point. So make local variations good for you. Play a little bit fast paced, but don't get yourself keep yourself so loose. This loose stuff is just going to get yourself killed everywhere. This is not the way to play against it. Um, so here you play this, and now black splits you. Now you've got another weak group. You have one. A group that can immediately die. A group that's not alive. A group that's dying. And another group that's not very in a good position so you have four weaknesses right now on this board and black has like one so I think this is now worse than a four stone game so uh, I think black should win this game as long as black plays solid and okay white's dead uh, as long as black plays solid and uh, plays to the best of his ability so here you can just simply surround right just surround you're good yeah no reason to panic just surround uh, so black, okay, black, it looks more psychological. I think black, you're just afraid of white. You're just afraid of your opponent. Uh, that's all it is at this point. So here it's really bad reading. Really bad reading. Really bad reading. Bad reading. Black, calm down. Stick to the basics. Calm your game down. Your opponent was in a bad position. All you have to do is stay strong and you're good. So here you can just play this way. And then uh, here, an unnecessary exchange. Completely unnecessary exchange because you're actually going to help your opponent connect under. So now you have to cut. This doesn't work. But okay, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. Calm down. You can't kill him anymore. It's not about trying to kill him anymore. Now you just need to fix your position. Now you can attack these two stones. He still only has one eye, so he's still fine. He's still weak. Uh, you can still attack them, but you made a mistake. That's what happens. You can't try to overachieve. So this just obviously doesn't work. Okay, you made another mistake. Okay, now you calm down to think, okay, what do I need to do? Well, okay, now this there's almost no attack, right? Everything's connected. So let's go back and go over here and attack these. But instead, you play on the inside. Like, this is no, You're not even reading here anymore. You're just, pl you're just clicking now, panicking. You cannot panic like this. So I think this is more a psychological thing. You made a mistake, and then you started panicking, and you made more mistakes when you panicked. When you make a mistake, it's a mentality thing. Calm yourself down, reevaluate the board, reevaluate the local situation, and then play a good move. You can't, or play the best move you can. Uh, you, if you make a mistake, yeah, you're going to lose a position probably, but there's still other stuff to play. There's a, still other stuff to try. You cannot, don't continue the mistake with more mistakes. You're just going to make it worse and worse and worse. You have to calm down, reevaluate the board, and uh, get to another good move. Uh, just do your best. But the, you can't panic when you make a mistake like this. You cannot panic. 
Um, so here it's really, really bad for black. Okay, this is just complete waste. White responded. I think both players just missed right here. White just goes here, everything's completely fine. This doesn't work. Come on, guys. Both players played way too fast. White played this in three seconds. Okay, so both players, calm down, slow down, evaluate the board. Both players are just clicking in this area. That's that's what I see. Okay, why are we even playing in this area now? Uh, black, you can cut white here. The latter is still good for you. I guess I guys, calm down, evaluate the board, read what's the best move you can play. Stop just clicking. Both players are playing moves in like three seconds a move. This is worse than Bioyomi, guys. You are playing your moves in like three seconds, five seconds, not even ten seconds. You're not even using double digits in seconds. This is worse than the Bioyomi. Like you have eight minutes on your clocks left, and you guys are playing your moves in like two to five seconds. Uh, this is not how you play Go. This is how you lose a Go. This is just clicking stones on a board. You're not reading, you're not evaluating, you're not thinking your moves through. You've got to slow down. You cannot play like this. You cannot play a uh, super fast pace like this. You have plenty of time. Use it. Think. Use your time. It is fine if you wind up in Bioyomi. That and in Bioyomi, you still have like 20 to 30 seconds to use. Time is meant to be used, not to be saved. You should use your time. But both players are playing way too fast and now both players are playing really small like even white white you're playing small moves over here uh this moves completely unnecessary you're already connected black you're playing small moves stop responding to your opponent now white finally to nukies but it jumps out here um everything's alive there so if you want to attack you can put pressure here if you want to nuki you can go play a big move over here um there's also the weak group here so you probably should do something about that as well so this move's kind of not it's kind of missing the point uh, it's too late to attack. This attack doesn't do anything. You're going to get yourself another weak group. Black. Block, block your corner and attack white. Like so. Now white uh, only has a two space extension. So white's still not alive. Um, so, uh, guys, I'm going to be honest. This game quality is actually quite low. Uh, there's a nine. There's a nine Q here is a single digit Q, but I think he has no idea how to play against handicap. You cannot play so loose like this. Black. It seems like you panicked. You were doing fine, and then you panicked. You made a mistake. You you fell into your opponent's confusion trap. I guess you got really confused. You had no idea what you're doing, and you panicked. And uh, White doesn't really have any type of plan to deal with handicap. He's just placing stones everywhere, waiting for a mistake. He leaves weaknesses everywhere. He's not really trying to make a position. So I think both players uh, have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Um, so, revert your game back to basics. Keep yourself solid, make good combinations, and attack your opponent's weaknesses when they have weaknesses. If there are no weaknesses, then go to Nuki. Play a big move. Stop responding to these small moves. R1 is never a big move. Like we, This is an in-game move. We've learned this like at like 15 to 20 Q. We learned that this move is an endgame move. And locally, the endgame move, you should Hane. Uh, right? I mean, you should Hane to try and reduce another point. But it's small. Go play a big move. Attack your opponent's weaknesses. Calm yourself down. Think, do I have to play here? If I don't have to play here, where else can I play? So if you want to improve, you're going to have to slow your games down. You slow Or slow yourself down. Use your time. Think your games through review your games this is really important review your games if you are not if you're playing a bunch of wasteful moves like this then you know that okay step one stop playing these moves step two think what should I be playing where's the move to play right now well I'm pretty solid these two stones maybe are uncomfortable so maybe I can just jump here right that that's a good move it, it splits white it fixes yourself that's a good move uh, just calm yourself down. You made mistakes, but Black's still way ahead. Like, if Black plays here, I think Black's going to win, regardless. Because White just has no good combinations on the board. White hardly has any territory. This uh, White's supposed to make good exchanges for him, but instead, White got, like, second-line territory, and Black got, like, major thickness, and White has two weak groups. 
So just calm down, play solid moves, play normal moves, uh, and don't play these little slow moves that don't do anything. If you make a mistake, calm down, reevaluate the board, and figure out where you need to be playing. Can you still do something locally? If not, go somewhere else. Do you need to defend? If not, then go somewhere else. So you cannot play like this. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so I think that's going to be the theme for the rest of this game, guys. White's playing crazy, black's getting confused, and, uh, yeah, that's just the theme for the rest of this game, it looks like. So let's go ahead and look at the result. I think I gave you, told you guys, like, look how crazy this board looks. Where's the territory? White died, that's expected. White died, that's expected. Okay, but if you look at it, like, where is the actual territory territory? Like, without a dead group. So here, just groups died. Okay, fights went bad. But there's no territory for anyone. There's no combination. There's no, like, this isn't what a game normally looks like. So it's just a bunch of crazy stuff happened. And, okay, now let's evaluate what's left over. Black won by resignation. Yeah, because there's two dead groups, and white has no territory. Three dead groups, sorry. Three dead groups, and white has no territory. So you see white, you can't play this way. All you, you have no territory. You have dead groups because you split yourself everywhere. Blacks finally managed to calm down and pull through and pulled out some kills in here, but uh, the first half of the game was just crazy. White played crazy, and black got really confused and had no idea what to do. So calm down, evaluate the board, find a good move to play. Just find a decently good move and it should be fine. Uh, review your games. Make sure you're making combinations. Make sure you're playing solid but not slow moves and attacking your opponent's weaknesses to gain profit and then getting to those big moves. Don't play these super super small slow moves that are just locally one or two points but don't need to be played. You're not going to die if you ignore it. Get rid of those moves as fast as you can. Those moves are complete waste. It's like passing it's just, a, you can't get to single digit Q and be playing those moves. Your opponents will just ignore you. Um, actually, no, I think you can get to 8Q. Because I think up to 8Q, they still play some of those slow moves. But still, get rid of them. If you want to get stronger than 8Q, get rid of them. But all right, uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And um, I will see you guys next time.